What's up, reefers? I'm Reefer Matt. I got an awesome video for you today. This is my top 10 tips for buying coral. So uh, right off the bat, there's an awesome coral show in uh, Southeast Michigan this weekend. It's on Sunday, October 8th. It's from noon to 3.30. It's the uh, Reeforama Coral Show, and it's in Rochester, Michigan. I'll put a link in the description so you guys can check it out. I highly urge you to go there. Uh, some of the vendors that are gonna be there are Cherry Coral, Detroit Reef Club, and Sweet Frag, and Homegrown Corals, plus a lot more. So I highly urge you to go there. If you've never been to one of these shows, they're awesome. Uh, the guy that puts on this particular show, he also does that huge Lansing show. So you know this show is gonna be awesome too. So I highly recommend you check it out. All right, moving on to the list. The list is so big, I had to make notes. I can't remember all this stuff. So uh, sorry for, for me having to read my notes, but there is no way I'm gonna memorize all this. Uh, my first tip is to research the requirements for your coral. I know it's real hard when you go to a coral swap and you see all these different corals and uh, you just wanna buy them all. But uh, I urge you, if there's something that you want to uh, get, do your research first. That way you come prepared and you know if you can meet the requirements for the coral or not. Uh, because the coral are animals and they're depending on you to have the right requirements for them. Uh, my next tip is while you're at a swap, bring a cooler or a container to keep all your corals in. This will keep them warm. It's not to keep them cold. Don't put any ice packs or your lunch or anything in them. It's for keeping the coral in to, to keep them warm. Uh, while you're at the coral show. You may be there for an hour or two, you may have an hour or two drive. So that just uh, helps keep them at the temperature they're supposed to be at. And it's also convenient to have something to carry them all around in. Tip number three. Uh, what I do when I go to these swaps is I go around and I look at a table and then I kind of make a round and I go all around and look at all the different tables first. There's gonna be a lot of people sometimes crowding around, you may be like this, you know, bumping shoulders and stuff with everybody, that's okay, you know, just kind of do one of these. If you can't get in there, come back later. But what I like to do is I make my rounds and see what, uh, you know, the different corals that I might be interested in, see how many they have, and I'll just go one to the next. And uh, I'm mentally uh, looking at the prices and the conditions and things like that. And uh, after I've seen all the coral that I want to look at, the different tables, then I start going back. I go, oh, I remember he had this one. You know, so I'll go back to that table and then I'll start uh, negotiating and buying the corals from there. Uh, tip number four, and that, that brings us to why you're at that table, is inspect the coral. Uh, make sure that there's, you know, the coral doesn't look like it's dying. Make sure there's not a ton of algae on the frag. Uh, you want, you know, nice corals that are presentable. Uh, there may be some algae on the frag plug. That's okay as long as it's not, you know, long, stringy, bubbly snot algae that you don't want in your tank. So uh, just inspect those corals, like this coral right here. This is one that I'm not gonna sell, but this, this coral right here ain't doing so good. This is a Ganapora, and it's probably out the door. So look for things like that. And uh, those are the types of corals that you don't wanna buy. Ones that aren't closed up, uh, and ones that aren't looking so good. And also with the uh, zoanthids and Palaethoa, I don't like to buy single polyps. I hope nobody's still selling single polyp zoas. Uh, but if you see those, I, uh, I, I uh, would urge caution with them because uh, a lot of times a single polyp of zoa or palaethoa, they don't make it. So hopefully there's at least you know, three or four polyps on the frag and that'll give you a bigger chance of success. Um, tip number five, uh, go ahead and ask the seller what his parameters are. Where does he keep his alkalinity? Where does he keep his calcium and his magnesium? Uh, what power were the lights in? How much flow? This will give you an idea of where to put the coral in your tank. Uh, make sure your parameters are close because you don't want to shock the coral by just throwing them in there willy-nilly wherever. You want to, uh, as close as possible, match the coral to where they came from and that'll give you a better chance of success. Tip number six, uh, go ahead and dip those corals when you get them home. Buy yourself some coral dip if you don't have some already and you want to inspect and dip those corals uh, for any pests that may be on them. Flat worms, uh, little things, uh, little sea stars, there's a whole bunch of things that'll be on that coral. What I like to do is I, I take my pipette after it's been sitting for a few minutes, I'll take a little pipette and I'll gently blow the coral and that'll dislodge any little critters that may be on that coral because sometimes they'll just sit on the coral and they'll just sit in the dip and they, they'll stay on the coral and you go to put them in your tank and you, you think, oh, there's nothing on it. When if you would have just blew it off a little bit, a little turkey baster or something, then you'll see them come off the coral 
uh, and then they'll be removed. However, later on, if you did notice some flatworms or something, I would suggest to quarantine that coral and to re-dip it later because there may be eggs on that coral and dip does not kill eggs. So those eggs could hatch in a few weeks. So that's something, if, if you want to keep that coral, that's something to look for and just re-dip it again. And that's tip number seven, is the, the quarantine, if you have a quarantine system, uh, quarantine your coral. Uh, there, there have been instances of ick or velvet or something getting into a tank uh, from a coral frag. It's, it's in my personal opinion, it, it's not a high li likelihood, but it could happen. I used to quarantine everything and uh, I, I don't anymore, but I, I really, really look, and you can't see ick or velvet obviously, but I really, really look when I dip and inspect coral. And uh, so far, uh, knock on wood, I haven't had an issue with that. But uh, if you have a quarantine tank or if you're thinking about setting up one, it, it wouldn't hurt to do it. Uh, it's something that could help you out in the long run. And uh, tip number eight, if you don't know the power levels that the coral came from and you don't know what the power levels are in your tank, put those corals lower in the tank. Uh, because what will happen is higher power will kill coral really quick. So lower power, it, it may not be the best for the coral, it's going to brown out or whatever, but at least it'll be alive. If you put it in really high power for, for a few days to a week, you may notice it's going to start to bleach out and it can go, it can go uh, off from there. So you want to make sure that you put that coral lower in the tank if you don't know what power it came from, and then you can gradually move it up. And I highly recommend uh, you power map your tank anyway, because that gives you the best knowledge of which corals to put where and how high up or lower to put them. Tip number nine, uh, as I mentioned before, if uh, you notice pests on your coral when you were dipping them, and you notice flatworms or something like that that lay eggs, uh, in a few weeks, dip that coral again. You can even redip it every week if you want, uh, just to make sure that uh, you get those eggs that may have been on that coral as well. And tip number ten: make sure you monitor those corals and uh, make your moves, uh, you know, in your placement if you have to. Uh, you may put that coral in a certain spot and it don't like being there for whatever reason, par, flow, uh, what have you. So uh, don't just leave it there forever, but give it a few weeks. Don't touch it. Don't move it around, you know, willy nilly. Give it a week or so, let it sit there. If it doesn't look like it's doing well, okay, go ahead and move it to a lower spot or a little lower flow or depending on the coral. You know, if it's an SPS coral, it's gonna want higher flow. Uh, so just things like that. You don't wanna just willy nilly move it, but you don't wanna just sit there either if it doesn't like being there. And uh, as a final tip, when uh, you get your coral, go ahead and take a picture of it. So that way you know what it looks like when you got it. So, you know, a month or two later, uh, when you see that coral and you're like, Something just seems off. I, I don't know, you know, what's going on with this. You can just pull up your phone and look and go, oh, this thing used to look like this and now it don't. It used to be this color and now it's not. It used to be out like this and now it's like this. It gives you a lot better idea because we as humans do not have as great a memory as we think we do. Hence, I dropped it Why I have this list that we just went through because I can't remember every single thing. So. Uh, just do your due diligence when you go to these swaps. They're awesome. They're fun. They're like my favorite part of reefing. I like going to them. I like being in them. I like talking to reefers like you. Uh, have fun with it. Just uh, be cautious, you know, and look for deals. You'll find some deals, uh, but just, just have fun uh, overall. So with that, I'm Reefer Matt. Thank you for watching and happy reefing.